use variational parameters to solve the given system. So to use parameters method, here's the steps. First, find homogeneous part, then find non-homogeneous part, and add them together. That gives you final answer. Okay, so here's the guideline, and I will walk you through it step by step when we work with a problem, specific problem. Okay, so here's the problem. Same as usual. First thing first is to find a minus lambda i. Let's call this matrix A subtracted with lambda i. It gives you this matrix, and then phi is determinant. Set it equal to zero. So for lambda, you will get lambda equals positive negative i. Let's take a look at the case when lambda equals i. Look it into here. It gives you this matrix augmented with zero. From second equation, you know that I have that k1 equals 1 plus i. I have k1 minus 1 plus i k2 equals 0. So for k1, I got 1 plus i k2. If I choose k2 1, then k1 is 1 plus i. And vector k is 1 plus i1. Then it's time to write your homogeneous solution. So it is equal to C1 times vector x1 plus C2 times vector x1, x2. What is vector x1? It is equal to the real part of vector k, which is 1, 1 times cosine t minus the imaginary part of vector k, which is 1, 0 times psi t. So why cosine t? So this is actually cosine 1, t. And where the 1 come from? It comes from the imaginary part of vector lambda of lambda okay so because you have a complex eigenvalue you can obtain your second answer very easily from the first one so duplicate this one and make some changes so change the operation here one positive one negative one positive and for the vectors switch the vectors you will get your second answer and if you work further multiply this in subtract them to get subtract this together it will give you a simplifier simplify form of this matrix doing the same thing for this one it will give you this one now it's time to find non-homogeneous part similarly like a minus lambda i you need to have vector uh, you need to have phi of t and it is obtained from homogeneous part which you exclude c1 and c2 and write out the rest okay so once you have this matrix phi is phi the determinant of phi t gives you negative 1 and then you need to find its inverse which is equal to 1 over the determinant times this matrix but you need to change something so for the upward diagonal line multiply by negative 1 for the downward diagonal line you are going to switch the position bring this up bring this down okay doing this it will give you this matrix then you need to find vector u u prime of t it is equal to inverse phi of t times f of t what is f of t f of t is this vector okay so what be long what belongs to vector x what doesn't belong to vector x okay now multiply these together it will give you this matrix simplify it will give you this one okay so here's a note so when you multiply matrices together, the order matters. So what do I mean by that? So phi inverse phi of t times f of t is not the same as f of t times inverse phi, inverse phi of t. Okay, so a times b is not the same as b times a for matrices. That's mm, what I mean by changing switching order. Okay, so continuing on this one, once you have this one, so for sine swear if you remember we have a trick identity that's saying that size square plus cosine size square equals one so if i have size square so if i have size square the other term i need to have on the other side i need to have one minus size square right and then Simplify this down. The reason I need to have, I need to change, I change this one because I want to simplify this down. Okay, so if I separate this, I have one over cosine, which is secant, cosine square over cosine, which is cosine. Okay, doing simplification, I will get this matrix. Next step is to find the integral of this one. Okay, so the integral of this, uh, apply the integral to this matrix, yes, me this matrix. And your final step is to write your non-homogeneous part, which is equal to phi of t times u of t. 
again do not switch their positions like uh, u of t times phi of t it will give you a different answer and that is not correct okay so multiply these together it gives you this crazy thing here okay so this line continue all the way down here and this is my second line okay so after I simplify it I get down to this one and your final solution is equal to uh, let me do let me write it over here so your final solution is equal to homogeneous the summation of homogeneous part plus non homogeneous part which is this one okay so here's my non homogeneous part and the homogeneous part is what I already circled above so look back your notes okay hope that makes sense that's it if you find the video is helpful feel free to give it a like share and subscribe to my channel in order to receive the most current videos don't forget to hit the bell so that you won't miss anything i'll see you next time